yeah, let's start with chapter 3.7. There I want to uh, tell you something about uh, some elementary blocks which we can use in control systems uh, very often. Uh, so that if you know these uh, details, then it is more easy to to solve uh, simple problems. Um, for this, I just want to start to give you a view on the um, table on page 16 in the workbook. Yeah, If you open this table, I have done this now, uh, you can find a, a table with condensed information. So each row is a block. Um, we will step through this table, not all blocks, but the most important blocks I want to explain a little bit more deeper. Uh, here you can find a standard name used in control system, a standard symbol used, the transfer function, step response, the unit step response, and border plot magnitude and phase curve. So this uh, information is good to have on paper so in, in, yeah, in the lecture, just make a print out of this page and then look anytime if you want to know some details about these blocks, look on this, um, this page, which has uh, the most important information collected together. So uh, this video, I start with a P block, then followed by an I block, and then followed by a D block. These are simple, mechanisms where you can see what I mean and show you uh, yeah, the details. In addition to this information on the table, I want to give you a circuit, an electronic circuit, realized with an active operational amplifier, so that you can um, realize these type of filters or controllers uh, in uh, just a simple way. Of course, uh, any of these filters can also be realized in digital, but this digital controllers and filters uh, is a part of Control System 2 lecture in the next semester. Okay, uh, all what you can see, uh, look into um, C workbook, page 16, table of important information. Okay, let's start with 3.7.1, the P block, the proportional block. The P comes from proportional. Uh, first I start with uh, an operational amplifier circuit, of course, a Proportional block can also be a voltage divider. So look for this circuit. A simple voltage divider with two resistances, R1 and R2. If we have a voltage input and an unloaded voltage output without, without any current, that is a non-loaded voltage divider, then we have a transfer function, which is simple. F of P is output voltage divided by input voltage, which is simple uh, R2 divided by R1 plus R2. And this is a constant factor defined, defined by the values of the resistances, uh, but with one disadvantage, uh, in this case the K is always smaller than 1. If you want to have um, larger values for k larger 1, uh, we need active amplification, so active circuit circuits. That's an amplification, and amplification um, is just easily um, realized with operational amplifiers. Uh, I prefer now for all filters using the inverting amplifier circuit. Um, well, we go to the negative input. Positive input is grounded. The virtual ground of the operational amplifier is also grounded. So the voltage 
which uh, we have as, as for the output u2 is also grounded and there is a feedback impedance in our case feedback resistance um, I call this R2, I call this R1, and here we can say, okay, the uh, voltage gain U2 over U1 in frequency uh, domain is nothing else than negative R2 divided by R1. Inverting amplifier. Inverting amplifier. Um, these impedances, in general, we can say, in general, uh, it is valid that this could be a Z1, that's in, in red, and if this is a complex impedance, this is also true, Z2. In general, we can say our operational amplifier circuit we use here now is negative Z2 over Z1. So the negative sign here is in general that what we um, normally want to avoid the question is can i live with this negative sign uh, i yes i can the answer is yes i can the advantage of this amplifier is i have a ratio of two impedances for the filter function so it is very simple to get the inverse filter function by just exchanging z1 with z2 then i have the inverse filter that is not possible with the well-known uh, a positive uh, not non-inverting amplifier or we have a different uh, equation not this with a plus sign it is not possible just to exchange these both uh, inputs to get a non-inverting amplifier that has to be realized in another way so what i want to tell you is this minus sign is a little a small disadvantage with a big advantage i have a ratio of impedances if this negative sign is disturbing in my application, just the answer is I add a second operation amplifier uh, with uh, two equal resistances, then I have, uh, then this is the minus sign is uh, avoided. Um, so far, okay. Um, here in this case, if R2 is larger than R1, I have also then a gain k which is larger than one and if i have resistances which are equal then of course the voltage gain is plus one but don't forget the input impedance here is always r1 it's not infinity or anything else it's r1 if you need an input resistance which is infinity add an isolation amplifier circuit in front of this uh, the um, price to pay is just you will need not one but, uh, but two or three operation amplifiers you can get four so quad quad in one housing uh, nearly for the same price than one in one housing uh, and the most uh, most expensive part of an operation amplifier circuit is a power supply yeah so i think uh, if you have one two or three operation amplifier necessary for your circuit that doesn't really matter okay so um, what i now uh, want to show you is a very simple information the step response and so on yeah uh, the first step i want to calculate is the unit uh, unit step response unit step response is easy because this is just a constant factor so the uh, unit step response is um, h of p h of p h of p is um, just k times sigma of t yeah if just uh, i show you how i have calculated this if u1 is a step function say u0 times um, 1 over p then the output voltage u2 is f times u1 
and you know what f is. Um, now, of course, this minus sign is missing now. Uh, f is minus k, um, and then um, multiplied with one uh, u zero u sub o times one over p. So this is um, u sub o times k times minus 1 times 1 over p. This is the step function. Again, yes, the step function, sigma of t. If we go into the time domain, back into the time domain, u, u2 of t is then uh, u sub o times k times minus 1 times sigma of t. And the unit step response then is uh, I have to divide by my amplitude. So h of t is uh, u2 of t divided by input amplitude. Then I have the response on a step with the amplitude 1 uh, is minus k times sigma of t or in fr frequency we have uh, yeah that is <laughs> uh, of course unit step response in frequency domain sorry i have uh, make it make the typical strange error this is of course one over p in time we have sigma of t so uh, so the step response Unit step response looks like this. Um, we have the um, h of t, and this is negative minus k, and the step response is this. So, uh, if in my application we have always uh, we want to use the uh, inverting amplifier then in any case we have a minus sign here in our equations um, I of course want to avoid this minus sign um, for this I use a trick in the following applications I use a simple trick in my circuit to avoid minus signs in the Equations. Uh, I use following trick. Trick in my circuit, in my circuit. I make the following. Now, in general, I have an inverting amplifier. That is my Z one to the negative input of my operational amplifier. Positive input is grounded. You can also draw this in this way. This is a U1 input. Then we have the feedback impedance to the output of the amplifier called Z2. Assume I, uh, yeah, of course, I, I use this equation. I have forgotten to mention this. I use this, this equation, this operational amplifier, in the first approximation uh, if the, the gain is infinitely large. Yeah? So we have an ideal operational amplifier with very, very large um, gain, differential gain. It, now I write the arrow of my output voltage in the opposite direction from ground to this pin then we have the transfer function f of p which is u2 over u1 which is plus z2 over z1 so in my equations the minus sign is avoided but of course the minus sign is still there the hardware of course is inverting and in the application if you want to Avoid this inverting, you have to add a second inverter with gain 1 or um, yeah, live with this minus sign. Sometimes the minus sign is, is helpful if you want to have negative feedback, then uh, if one amplifier automatically delivers this, uh, this inverting effect.
Yeah. Uh, so in my equations, the minus sign is gone, but in the hardware, the minus sign is still still available. That's not uh, not a, a real uh, question. Yeah. So with this trick, my equations now are positive. Uh, in in P controller, uh, we can then say f of p is k is r2 over r1, and this k could be larger than one, also or smaller than one. That um, yeah, it is uh, independent of the um, use of this circuit. Okay, um, so the um, block function gets now a symbol. This symbol comes from the step response. So you will see in the workbook, page uh, 16, uh, the symbols are symbolized step responses. Uh, I think to help you to see my pointer, I should uh, change the color, the background color to gray, that then you can see my point a little bit better. Okay, the symbol of my P, P block symbol is a symbolized uh, step function that is just a line in the top region, the horizontal line in the top region of this block. That is the symbol of the P controller, P block. And one step more, the um, k of the p-block is the only parameter which defines it to the total function. The k, the gain of this block, is written on the top left corner of this block. So if I have this symbol, and if I have this k, then I know all about the um, transfer function of the uh, this simple block. Uh, this is used for the temperature controllers, which are uh, uh, neglectable timing or for uh, amplifiers with neglectable frequency response just proportional gain nothing else no frequency response uh, i open the page 16 in the workbook and show you that row uh, that uh, i skip the border plot because the border plot is just so trivial that i should not uh, use any second for this just a view on page 16. So here in row number one, you see a P block, that's a name for proportional. Uh, this is a symbol, transfer function is symbol this. We have mentioned the unit step response in our um, inverting amplifier with negative sign in the uh, trick version with a positive sign. And of course, in the border plot, we have a horizontal line for the gain with the distance k and db and no phase shift. Now, this is the a simple border plot, so I think I should uh, have covered now this point uh, and uh, should not spend any second more for the P block. More interesting is the I block here in this table, the row number four. Yeah, that's the next point in my listing in my um, structure of the lecture. This is chapter 3.7.1. The I block and the I stands for uh, integrator. Integrator. A, an integrator cannot be realized with passive elements, so only with R's and C's and L's. Uh, you need for an integrator, if you want to have a pure integrating effect, you need uh, our uh, uh, non inverting active operational amplifier circuit now with the following elements we assume also the ideal operational amplifier the input uh, resistance is unchanged uh, then we can call it um, of course r without index and the feedback impedance now is the capacity this is um, non-inverting amplifier circuit behaves like an integrator the plus input grounded so that should go on here so we can say okay uh, if you want this and with my trick you do this the transfer function f of p which is u2 over u1 is now plus uh, feedback impedance Capacitance C has a feedback impedance 1 over PC. We've mentioned chapter 2. Divided by input 
impedance, which is just a simple resistance R without one. Uh, if you put this together, we see we have a 1 over P times R times C. And we know that the uh, product of a resistance with a capacitance uh, has the physical unit time, so this behaves like a time, so we can say, okay, this is 1 over PTI. Uh, but some people prefer the expression of the behavior, of the standard behavior of an integrator uh, with a k factor in the numerator, with index i for coming from integrator divided by p. So one, some people prefer this description, other people prefer this description. Now we have uh, defined the transfer function of my integrator. So that we can now calculate the um, step response of integrator u2 of p. In uh, I calculate the step response always in the frequency domain and then convert back into the time domain uh, as shown in chapter 3 uh, 4 or 3 3. u2 of p is transfer function ki of p multiplied with input signal and step response yeah step response is always the response response uh, has always as if input function is u1 of p is amplitude divided by p so we see we write amplitude u0 u sub o divided by p and uh, what you see then is this is u sub o times ki divided by the squared of the complex frequency. Here I stop a little bit and want to mention uh, uh, the following interesting effect. You see, I have an integrator with a transfer function factor over p and I have a Second function also with a constant factor divided by p, but this is not an integrator, this is a signal. And if the signal is something over p, we call this step function. If this is a system with a system transfer function 1 over p, we call this integrator. So it depends on the meaning what you want to express with your frequency function, what, uh, uh, what the behavior is. 1 over p can be an integrator if we talk about systems. 1 over p is also a step function if we call, if we use uh, signal functions. Yeah? A signal and a system function then uh, multiplied gives the output signal. And you, you know in our table, if we convert this now back into the time domain with table values, then we can write down the step response of my circuit with R in input impedance, C in feedback impedance, is U sub O times Ki times, and 1 over P squared, you can look into the workbook, page 9, I think, you will see 1 over P squared in time, the signal is the ramp function, yeah, the ramp function um, over t, I draw the u sub uh, 2 over t. This is 0 in the beginning phase, and then constant increase. Uh, we can draw a straight line curve like a ramp if you know one point. One point is the zero point, it's origin. And uh, a good second point is what? A good second point for an integrator is that time where the output uh, increases by your input voltage. Yeah? If we note this time, you see um, you can write the transfer function also not with ki but also with 1 over ti. We see the u sub o divided by ti is the prefactor, t is the parameter, 
uh, you can find that after one time constant of the integrator gi, the output increases uh, with the amount which is defined by the input step amplitude. Okay, after two time constants, we have two times u sub o, three times, three times u sub o. So there's a linear increase, uh, stopping, of course, where there, this voltage stops at the voltage VCC, the supply voltage of this operational amplifier, normally 15 volt. Now the output voltage cannot be larger than 15 volt. Okay, uh, this can uh, lead to the uh, symbol. Yeah, that is the last step of this video. Then we uh, have a look on the uh, Bode plot. Uh, I want to spend some more minutes to explain the Bode plot of the integrator. But the symbol is uh, easily explained because the symbol has again block, a block with input and output. And um, the symbolized step response is just a, a, a line, a straight line from the uh, bottom left corner to the top right corner. And you can now write the Ki on the top left side, or if you prefer to express the properties of the integrator with the time constant, Note that then the number of the time constant is reserved on the top right side. Or with the position of the parameter in the writing of the symbol, you can detect if you mean the time constant or the um, inverse of the time constant, which comes later in the next chapter, which is then the um, yeah, unity gain in frequency. We will see this. But I think I stop here and may open a new video. Okay. Yeah, 